Cheers, everyone. From breweries to distilleries, we're taking you through some of our favorite spirit spots in all of the British Isles in this episode of Window Seat. Dude, bring the energy. This week is going to be fun. We're doing something a little different this week. All the way, don't burn we understand if you're coming to Ireland or the British Isles, part of the draw is the luscious libations. It's part of why we came too. So we wanted to do a video on just that. Has anyone been to Rome before? Mm -mm. No, first time? The quality and the quantity available are like a booze bonanza. So we wanted to take you to some of our favorite places where they make them and where to partake. Yes, the establishments that will be chosen are the ones that we shall indeed be looking at to evaluate for choosing. Upon the choosing, we will then have chosen them and proceed inside to drink. Amen. Did you get that? Now, we need to start in Edinburgh. While here, we wanted to do a scotch tour. I mean, we are current and former TV news people. Mm, I love scotch. I love scotch. Scotch is got scotch. We thought about Holyrood, Glen Kinchy, and a number of others. But there was something new that jumped out at us that we had to try. The Johnny Walker experience. We didn't want to be late. Now, this is not an actual distillery. Think of it as a Scotch theme park. Malt Disney, if you will. If you don't enjoy the flavor, all the way to the left. Dum dum dum, do do do. There are some options in the middle if you're neither here nor there. From the moment we walk in for our $35 tour, you know it's unique. But we're taking a flavor quiz first because when we're done, we get drinks. And they want to know what drinks are best for us. And I appreciate that because I like to have a nice proper cocktail. After some tasty questions, I am beige. So we'll see what that means. Andy is blue. Like lots of sweet stuff. So. <laughs> you're also beige. All right. So grab a beige one. Yep, man. beige one. Then wanted to kill some time before the tour in the storefront, which has a number of exclusive blends, plus a bottle for 20,000 pounds. Wow. We did consider engraving a window seat bottle, but instead it was time to experience. Andrew number two. As mentioned, this is a very different type of tour. The guides are actually actors telling the history of the brand in a number of choreographed and interactive ways. Nor a Scottish culture from whiskey and no Scottish story. It, that's when we talk about like the Disney aspect of it especially, that's where it really comes in. If she misses a beat, she's on her face, there's like moving treadmills, there's costume changes. It, it's, you don't expect it. I could not have thought of all everything they went through to come up with the ideas for this tour. It's really damn cool. But don't worry. Halfway through, you get a drink break to correlate with your wristband from that initial survey. A little more interactive education on the process, including what is required to be called Scotch, has to mature in Scotland for three years, makes sense. And not to burst your bubble, <laughs> but this is truly a small Disneyland for Scotch drinkers. Thank you. Finished off in this trendy bar, where you get two more drinks, which makes this kind of a bargain. Yes, you paid 35 bucks to get in, but you got three fancy cocktails and one of the most high-tech multimedia experiences you can possibly imagine. Pro tip, eat before coming here. And eat afterward too. That's the biggest ice cube ever. Bigger than the actual artist ice cube, I think. Not big. I think that hit the Titanic. They do have quite the rooftop bar and restaurants with prime views of Edinburgh. This place has only been open since 2021, so it's very new and we highly recommend going in Edinburgh. Definitely worth your time and money. This truly is one of the coolest tours I've ever taken, period, hands down. They have done this better than you could ever imagine. It's only a couple years old, so they really spent some time perfecting this. And it's almost like going to Disneyland. It's so multimedia, it's so interactive. There are so many cool gadgets and gizmos throughout the tour. And it costs 30 pounds, which may seem like a lot, but you get three cocktails along the way and you could, couldn't get those cocktails at a bar for less than 30 pounds. So really, you're getting three drinks and this tour essentially for free 
and it is unforgettable. So if you are into booze in any way and you're in, in Edinburgh, you've got to come to Johnny Walker. They didn't pay me to say this. I'm telling you, this is that cool. You know, we've done a lot of brewery tours. We've done distillery tours. We've done a lot of these things before. And honestly, this is one of the coolest ones we've ever done. A lot more than you would expect out of a normal tour. And getting all the drinks, everything paid for like that, the value of it, you can't be beat. And that, that's what's the big thing about it is it's great value, a great tour, you enjoy it, and it's going to be very memorable for any trip you take out here. You've got to make sure you do that. Very, very glad we did this. Now, if you're looking at pubs, there's a number of fun options where scotch and local Scottish beers are readily available, accompanied, of course, by live music. Whether you want to wander over to Black Cat, perfectly backlit by the candle, or do a mini pub crawl down the Royal Mile to Deacon Brody's, Number One, Albanock, George the Fourth, or this cool place with a bunch of antlers everywhere. There's plenty of places to wet your whistle. Back over in Ireland, where their slogan is fill your heart, but they also want you to fill your cup. You think Guinness and Irish whiskey. Let's start with the Irish whiskey. Before we get started today, uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about my whiskey history. And once again, you're going to have plenty of options. Bushmills, Teeling, Dublin Liberties, Pierce Lions, of course Jameson, and many others. As you can see, there's a lot of scaffolding and everything going on. Right? We chose to visit Rowan Co., the newest distillery tour in Dublin, and right across the street from Guinness. Water. Water, yeah. Barley. Barley, yeah. Now this is an actual distillery, so you can learn about the process, also much like scotch, Irish whiskey must mature in Ireland for three years to be called Irish whiskey. She wanted to make something that was for a modern audience, right? Not everyone wants to drink their whiskey neat. Some people want it with a little mixer and a cocktail. We chose this blending tour, which allowed us to sample a bunch of different options to create our own blends. It smells very sugary. I don't do with the spice. Okay. <laughs> That's fine, I mean. The grain would have more of an impact from the bourbon. Okay. So it's interesting that you like the malt more than the grain. I know. Yeah. I Maybe because it's different. It's something a little bit different. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Now we're not master blenders. We want five to 10 milliliters of sugar now, okay? So depending how sweet you want it, I'd say start a little bit lower. I don't are too sure how sweet you want it? It comes quick. It comes out quick, yes. Yeah, so to clarify, this is grain, this is malt. Grain on the left, malt on the inside, right, yeah. Sure got that yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 33 and 17. 33 and 17, very precise yeah. malt. So, malt work. Work. Sure, yeah. so these turned out to be some interesting concoctions. That is good. That's <laughs> nice. Very nice. And they're strong. So have the palate prepared for what's coming. Strong. It's good though. It's very tasty. Very smooth. Drams and a drink, but tasty. Especially for those wanting a true Irish whiskey experience. Yeah, it's like a little kind of drink glass or something, yeah. right? <laughs> and one we absolutely approve of. So it's cool. They, they make it about the drinks. They want you to taste it. They want you to, to feel it. And that's really cool. And I enjoyed that. It, it's like a 180 from what we experienced at Johnny Walker up in Edinburgh. It, it's completely different, but not in a bad way. I thought this was uh, much less high tech, but much more communal feeling. Like you're in a little group with like 10 people and you're all sort of having this vibe together and you're joking around and you're learning about the process of blending whiskey. And I thought that was cool. Although it was a little short. I wish it was a little longer. Give us a little more sort of sense of the history and and uh, what goes into the process. But no complaints, it's, it's pretty great. Even Drew and Andy, the real whiskey drinkers in our group, gave their seal of approval. I liked how interactive it was and how customizable everything was, especially compared to the Johnny Walker tour. Johnny Walker tour was magnificent, don't get me wrong, but I just liked that there was, I felt like there was more options and more interactivity as opposed to like steering you in a certain direction. So I liked it and I highly recommend, so cheers. Once you get to know it and what goes into it and the different tastes that you can detect, um, there's a, it's a, there's a lot more to explore and a lot more to discover. And uh, we picked up a lot at Johnny Walker, but Rowan Company, that was a great tour, informative to the point, and it was fantastic. So ready to drink some more whiskey. Cheers. Cheers. Yes, we know why they have a 5.0 rating on TripAdvisor. Which brings us to the most popular sipping stop in all of Ireland, right across the street, the Guinness Storehouse. 
Hello. This is where you get to learn the roots of the more than 250 year old beer brewed in Dublin. It's here for 9,000 years. The beauty was we walked right up and got in. Not something that should be counted on. I think the key is to come off season because we're here in January. The crowds are not that bad. We got right into Guinness without having to wait in any line or buy tickets in advance. So if you can, travel in the off season. Great time to visit. It made the tour that much more enjoyable. Whether we were learning about the history or just testing our knowledge. It's actually a little white lie, so Guinness is not black. So can anyone tell me by raising your hands if this actually sample of Guinness the true colour of the Yes, the ruby red. Yeah. No, we'll this man over here, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, see, she was asking us what colour this is because people—it's so dark. People think it's a black beer, but really, Andy knew this, and so because he, Andy knew the correct answer, which was red, Andy got an extra no, beer. Man, man. Doing a little tasting. Getting a little taste of a Guinness before we get to the end, where we have the big Guinness. So this is our mini Guinness as we get halfway through the tour. Or the proper ways to drink it. That we like to say, big, nice, generous mouthfuls. Never, ever, ever sip Guinness when you sip Guinness you're just getting the head on top. In that head is just pure nitrogen gas of the very bitter taste. So three, two, one, last So big, nice, generous mouthful. This place is absolutely massive. Many stories with exhibits and tastings throughout, plus an exhibit with all the famous Guinness marketing over the years. Feats of strength. I mean, I'm not as tall as the guy in the, uh, yeah. I'm not as tall as that guy, so I can't reach up there. I don't think it really works. But really, the reason we're here is for the end. Now, we didn't get the selfie stout or take the pouring lessons. Those cost extra. Yes. 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 We made our way to the 360 bar at the top, where we got to enjoy our pint with the best views you can get in Dublin. And yes, Guinness poured here just tastes better. Can't explain it, but it's true. Trust us. Slouncher. Slouncher. Where are we heading now? Somewhere. Somewhere in the Temple Bar District. Obviously, if you're in Dublin in search of spots to enjoy your spirits, the actual Temple Bar is the first place to come to mind. But no, this place is packed to the gills almost any time you come. We were lucky to find a spot at 6 p.m. on a Monday. It's gonna be packed regardless of when you go and what day of the week, because it's just, that is the place. It is known for a reason and it's packed. Everyone wants to go there. And it's all tourists for obvious reasons because they all want to go there. On the weekend, that was a lost cause. Hey, we're never gonna get a drink. Let's just try somewhere else. <laughs> Which is why we say stop in and see it but move on to other locations. The drinks are just as good. Temple Bar, people think it's just the bar called Temple Bar, but it's not, it's a whole neighborhood. Uh, and so you don't have to be stuck going to that one bar. There's a bunch you can go to. So we'll see if we can check a different one out. And the live music is also top notch. But the Temple Bar District is the Dublin equivalent to New Orleans' Bourbon Street. So be ready for that. And there are tons of great spots, including the Brazen Head, Dublin's oldest bar, but much like Temple Bar, gonna be loaded with tourists. So explore other areas as well. <music> Lastly, we have a bonus spot for you to hang out at in Belfast, because you shouldn't leave the British Isles without seeing this city. Among those reasons, the Duke of York, which was fantastic. It was one of our favorite watering holes in all of the British Isles. It's kind of like Temple Bar up north, with the aesthetic at least, but it's not quite as crowded and has a bit of that Belfast grittiness to it. Highly recommend. So no matter what your spirit, I'm sure you can find something here in the British Isles. Bottoms up. Cheers to next time. That's it for this episode of Window Seat. If you have any suggestions or spots we missed anywhere great, please let us know in the comments below. And if you could do us a favor and hit like or subscribe or share so we can spread the word on our adventures trying to visit every country on the planet. We'll be back next week with a brand new video. Just 
not on booze this time. I kicked ass. See you then.